Very often in English, what you see is not what you get. Several dozen of the most used words in English, words that add up to maybe around 20% of whatever we say, are typically pronounced not as their spelling suggests, but in a special reduced way. This is only rarely taught to non-natives, and even when it is taught, many just don't believe it. In this video, with the help of some famous speakers of English, I'll show how these weak forms are a major part of why many people don't sound like a native. I'm going to focus here on words which natives, Brits, Americans and others, very often pronounce with the weak vowel schwa. Uh, which is the most common sound in English. Using these weak forms is normal, not casual or slang. Let's check out some speakers who are admired for their speech. Non-natives often tell me that they'd like to sound like Stephen Fry. Well, I don't think most natives want to sound like Stephen Fry, but he has an amazing voice and enormous skill in using it, as I experienced close up on his BBC radio show. With me now is Dr. Jeff Lindsay, who's a speech coach and honorary lecturer in linguistics at University College London. Listen to the word at, which in fact is not at, but at with a schwa. At, at, at University College London. The same goes for and. And, and. and honorary lecturer in linguistics. Very often the weak form of and loses its final D too. And what about the indefinite article? Before a consonant, it's usually just schwa, uh. But here, Stephen Fry almost submerges it between whose and speech. Use a speech. Use a speech. Jeff, our intonation is hugely important, not just to the way we communicate, but to our identity. Here, to the becomes tth. In the word to, as we've just seen with the indefinite article, even the schwa has practically disappeared. To the way we communicate. Now compare this with his tua. But our identity. Stephen Fry, like myself and many, many others, tends to use t before a consonant, but tu before a vowel. I think we can all agree that that extra quality makes language all the more poetic. Now you might have difficulty even hearing the word can. But producing it in such a weak form is totally normal, unless we have some pressing reason to strengthen it. Can, can, can all agree. Now English has two words written that. One points to an object which is there, as in, I'd rather have that. And in English it's always pronounced strong. Then there's the little connecting word, which is generally weak. That. I think that it's raining. Listen to Stephen Fry distinguishing these two different words. Either that, either that, either that extra quality. Now these weakening words are sometimes pronounced strong, perhaps for emphasis. Also when they're the very last word in an utterance, and often when they're the very first word. I'll do what I can. And the winner is... But in the course of fluent speech, they're typically weak. Perhaps you're thinking that these weak forms only happen when two people are chatting, like on the radio show. So let's try something a bit more formal. Let's listen to Dame Judi Dench reciting Shakespeare to a large public audience in a church. I dreamt there was an emperor. I dreamt there was an there was an there was an there was an emperor. Three weak forms in a row. There was an this is extremely common. There was an error. There was an accident. There was an outbreak. There was an awesome show on Netflix. But perhaps Dame Judy just slipped. Maybe it was just a one-off mistake. His face was as the heavens. His face was as the was as the was as the was as the heavens. Three more in a row was as the. Hmm. Surely there must be someone who can pronounce the Queen's English properly, like it's written. Across the, the, the Commonwealth and, and, and around the, the, the world, we have, 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 have seen heartwarming stories of, of, of people coming together to, to, to help others. There were 20 words there, counting heartwarming as two words, 
Six of them were weak forms. Of course, all these speakers are quite old, so let's end with someone slightly more 21st century. Tom Hiddleston is another speaker that non-natives tell me they admire. Here he is reciting Lord Byron's So We'll Go No More A Roving. The poem contains 25 of these words that can possibly be weakened to or towards schwa. Let's see if he weakens any of them. So we'll go no more a roving. So late into the night. Though the heart be still as loving, and the moon be still as bright. For the sword outwears its sheath, and the soul wears out the breast. And the heart must pause to breathe, and love itself have rest. Though the night was made for loving, and the day returns too soon, yet will go no more a-roving by the light of the moon. You could quibble that once or maybe twice he only half weakens the word and at the start of a line. Remember what I said before about and the winner is? But I wouldn't say that he pronounces any of those 25 words strongly. It's a phonetic fact that English makes a remarkably big difference between its strongest and its weakest words. This contributes a lot to the distinctive rhythm of the language. If any of this has come as a surprise to you, it means that you have been hearing English not as it is, but as you expect it to be. If any of this has come as a surprise to you, it means that you have been hearing English not as it is, but as you expect it to be. Of course, it's not a crime if you don't use weak forms, but anyone who wants to understand native speech is going to have to cope with all the weak forms we produce. But if I'm speaking to someone whose English isn't very good, I may decide to strengthen some of the words that I have been discussing here, so that I sound more like spelling, and so that they can understand me more easily. It's up to you. Or it is up to you. I hope that you have found this interesting. Do not forget to like and to subscribe. Bye for now.